Okay, guys, we are live. Today is a beautiful sunny day here in London. Finally, our MP is locked the fuck down, everyone. So they should be in their houses. Today, I'm really, really pleased. I've got a super, superstar lineup of good friends of mine. Uh, Paul is in the house. Tom Wang, Casey Goss, Evelyn Demerov, and Anthony Lee. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Hey. 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 How are we all doing? Really good. Excellent. You want us to answer all at once? Because I feel like that's not a good strategy. <laughs> What's that, sorry? I said you want us to answer all at once? Yes, yeah, so no, no. I want you to answer one at a time. Right. I'm just going to maneuver to to some of the groups here as we've just gone live. So starting with Paul, for those who have been living under the rock, can you explain who you are and what you do? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Select Chatbots, where we offer a ranking service and coached lots of people. And yeah happy to be here and yeah um so i'm over to you because you're next to my screen <laughs> tom oh me yeah over to oh, you next, hey. my friend um, yeah my name is tom i'm from vancouver canada uh seven figure amazon seller uh we have our private label businesses running right now uh on the side i also dedicate a lot of my time coaching other entrepreneurs to start their own amazon fba businesses have coached uh, well, over 800 people here locally in Vancouver. Um, basically, it's all I, I do like weekend class classroom style, yeah. Uh, which obviously been impacted by the uh, the COVID 19 virus. So moving everything online, but uh, yeah, happy to be here as well. Excellent. Uh, cool. Right. So in the box here, we've got hi, all looking good from Lawrence Barnes. Uh, is Paul Harvey getting more handsome every day? <laughs> Roger I think Person he is. says hello. And there we go. Right. So first things first, let's get straight into it. Paul, due to the current climate, mm -hmm. give me uh, an example of one way that people could rank and take the uh, advantage of the current climate at the moment on Amazon. So I think that the answer to that first comes down to is what, what's their product? What's their niche? Because there are two different uh, issues right now. And that's in even in Search Up, we have our own ranking service. The people are selling non-essential goods. Um, we actually advertise and actually do the rebates for them. And we've seen Facebook ads go through the roof simply because those rebate customers, even though they get stuff for free, they can't wait two weeks or three weeks according to the Amazon delivery time zone. So Facebook ads are increasing there. Um, but if you're right now selling supplements, like although I hate advertising for supplements because they were a hard grind, now's the right time. So anyone right now, look at those two things. If you're in a, a non-essential list, a non-essential product, like just start right now warming up your list, get, get ready to make them hot because as soon as the borders open and you can ship, that's when you dial, the, uh, dial that list and just make them just pay for you. And yeah, so um, yeah, pretty much that. So if you, uh, warm your list up if you're not in essential goods. Excellent. Guys out there, do you want to start leaving comments, uh, some questions you may have? I'm going to carry on going around, but I'll get to a point where I'll start answering, get the questions answered for you. Uh, Tom, over to you. Yeah, um, I think I'm happy to chat anything with regards to ranking um, as if everything is normal, I guess. But as of current state, we've actually stopped all of our ranking process just because of literally yesterday we noticed that uh, a lot of our products have been moved from like the ship date has been yeah. moved a month later. So if you buy something on our listing right now, fulfilled by Amazon, you're going to yeah. get that product April 30th. So even if we do any sort of ranking, we just can't see the conversion rate being any good. So how we so for any listeners out there who are listening to this, what we did right away um, yesterday, what we did was we switched everything to FBN listings. Yeah. Uh, we lost the Amazon Prime badge, but having said that, um, our listing is the only one in our competitor in our competition that is currently being shown as shipped three to five days. Mm -hmm. um, that has actually given us. Uh, we'll have to see and, and kind of test, I guess, but it's given us a little bit of a competitive advantage right after we switched everything over at 2 PM yesterday, our orders start coming in quite a bit. So yeah. in terms of ranking, like I said, um, we're actually not doing any ranking right now, but I'm happy to discuss ranking as if everything's normal, I guess right now. So. Cool. Uh, Casey, your observations, please. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think the, the, the question is, do you have the right product at the right time right now? The the two issues are having inventory. And then number two, is your product still selling well right now? And for some, some non-essential products, that's not the case. For some people in certain categories, uh, you may be killing it right now because either your competitors don't have the inventory or you, you just have the right product at the right time. 
So I think the real question uh, before asking, should we, well, uh, asking how we rank is, should we rank? Um, do we have a right, the right product right now? And I, w I will say, you know, if you are someone that has maybe struggled to be a, a top player in your category, but you have a lot of inventory and you're willing to sell to FBM, that was a really great time for you to go and drive keyword ranking because nobody else is. Nobody else is running, or it seems very like unlikely that your competitors are running these promotions to drive keyword ranking. So it's a great opportunity for you to leap ahead of them if you have the inventory um, and if you have the means of fulfilling it. So now is a great opportunity if you're willing to kind of play your cards right. Um, and I, I, again, I think it's very important, go look at brand analytics, go see what is selling right now, what people are searching for right now. Whenever there's change, I think there is significant opportunity and I, I doubt things will go back uh, exactly the way that they were. And so understanding kind of the new paradigm of now and how things will be uh, is gonna really allow some people to, to leap ahead of the competition. Yep, sounds good. Evelyn, what's been your observations over the last couple of weeks? Um, so in Canada, haven't changed much. Um, things are pretty much the same. Uh, still get deliveries. Uh, people have uh, inventory still working. Um, right now, we just we just uh, we're just waiting to see what will happen next. So not nothing much we can do. Uh, we've done an experiment yesterday. Uh, and the ranking behaves as usually, hmm. um, so nothing changed there. Yeah, uh, but th things will gonna change in the next weeks for sure. Well, I was gonna ask because you're always tapping and, and under underneath in the code. Are you are you and your team? I was just wondering if Amazon's made a shift in the algorithm for more essential products or any shift that you'd notice. But you're saying everything's pretty much the same as it stands. Yeah. Yes. Cool, Anthony. What's your take on things? So. I wish that I had a sneaky ranking factor for right now, but I can at least explain what I understand is happening. Uh, two things, unless my inf information is incorrect, that I have come to understand about the algorithm that may impact the way things are able to rank. One, uh, for lack of a better word, there's this template that market managers use to submit that essentially organizes ASINs in such a way that it um, distributes the where uh, products are placed under hot new releases. Um, I think there's a badge in there somewhere and then most gifted items. Anyway, the fact that that exists tells me there's probably a lot more like them. Uh, what that means is that this is a small piece of probably many pieces that affect the overall um, algorithm in its decisions on how to organize ASINs. So with that said, should Amazon have decided to, and I can't confirm whether or not they've definitely done this, it's just the fact that now I kind of feel like I know that they can and how they can, but if Amazon decided to be proactive with their reprioritization of essential goods, they could easily submit a, a templates like this that will essentially inform the algorithm on how to organize ASINs. Now I have clients that have lost rank and they sell what would be considered non-essential goods. So that might be what's happening. But even if that's not what's happening, we know that the algorithm does weight rank based on availability. And because of the new shipping priorities and the fact that non-essential goods are being pushed out three plus weeks in uh, shipment, then by default, that is going to therefore affect ASIN's capabilities of ranking. So one way or another, uh, at this moment in time, things are not normal on the dot-com platform. So ranking efforts might be strenuous uh, at best. And, yeah. and that is what we've observed anyway is happening. Okay, so basically what we're saying is, to, in a nutshell, everyone's on a lean back at the moment because of the delay time, right? So let's take the delay time off the table in terms of delivery. Let's just say we add normal prime, yeah, and sense that people were getting deliveries in two, three days or a small period, depends on where you are in the world. What would be a strategy you would be using at the moment to take uh, advantage of you know like you've got this mentality of scarcity like when we go into a downturn a lot of people retreat but others go on 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 like they go on the defense rather than the offense 
if you had a war chest and you were going on the offense and let's just say prime was delivering on a regular basis um across all products what would you be doing now anthony so I guess it really depends on what your goals are. A lot of people use Amazon as a platform, rightfully so, uh, to create cash flow, in which case then sourcing essential goods as quickly as possible and then basically flipping those would be the the best way to capitalize uh, on the current fear. Um, however, my approach would probably be more leaning even harder into branding. And the reason is because I feel like Right now, everybody's on emotional high alert. Hmm. So if you can make an impact with somebody while they're in emotional state, then you'll make a more lasting impact and uh, probably win over more long-term customers that way. Makes sense. Um, Tom, your take? <sighs> Sorry, do you mind repeating question one more time? Yes. So like, if, if, if this, this, everything is normal? If hypothetically we're still in what we're in at the moment, but imagine prime terms back to normal, you've got a war chest and there's people okay. in defense mode and you're going on an offense. What would you be doing? Yeah. Um, I think kind of echoing what Casey said with regards to any sort of um, times like this, it presents a lot of opportunities. So if I had a war chest, meaning basically cash and the strategy is to rank right now, um, I would definitely be ranking for more keywords. Now, having said that, the first thing I want to say is I talk to Anthony Lee and Casey a lot yeah. behind the scenes, and I get a lot of my information from these two. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so I'm just not going to, I'm not going to pretend to be like, oh yeah, I created this. Um, yeah. What's really interesting about my situation is that I have 800 students. And so I get a lot of data points. So whenever I receive some sort of information, I test it on my store first. And if I see any sort of positive impact or negative impact, I actually pass it on to my students and then they further um, uh, validate the thesis. So that's kind of cool. So what I've been seeing working really well in the ranking game is essentially two different ways to rank. The first way to rank right now is essentially something I like to call like a blitz strategy. So that's like, um, in two weeks, you, you just want to get as many sales as possible through different types of super URLs. And that's really important. That's something I learned from Casey. Um, it's just switching through to different super URLs. And um, that has worked really, really well, targeting two to three keywords. Uh, the downside to that strategy is that, unfortunately, every single day, you do need to be giving away a lot of units, which if you're a beginner, it's a lot of cash flow, right? These, these, these rebates can really cost you a lot of money and that adds up. But the other way that I found is more of a steady and long-term approach, where instead of two weeks, what you want to do is you want to do more of a steady approach over 30 to 45 days. And then you still want to rotate through the super URLs, pick a few keywords that you want to rank for. I say somewhere between like a thousand to five thousand search searches per month. So mm -hmm. something that's a little bit lower. But then what we found is that by targeting um, these keywords over thirty to forty-five days, you don't need to be giving that one that many units a day away. So you can get away with giving away three to five units per keyword per day. So if you go go after three keywords then that's really just like 15 units a day, which is pretty manageable versus like 50 or 60. And that we've seen a really, really good results with regards to not only driving up ranking for those keywords, but also lifting up a lot of other keywords as well. And I think it's just because of um, basically Amazon sees a lot of consistency with regards to your conversion rate, with regards to your daily sales, and Amazon wants to reward you for a bunch of other keywords. So. The short answer is, you know, if you are planning to do some sort of giveaway right now, if you have the war chest, um, I would probably lean towards the two week strategy just because we don't know how long this virus is going to last for. If you go the 30 to 45 days, maybe by the end of the 45 day, like all this will be, you know, gone already. But if you just bliss it for two weeks, um, you can probably get, uh, you know, your ranking quite high in the search results, therefore generating sales for your products. So for an example there, you may hedge your bets. You might see where you're partway through and you might see the numbers, for a better word for it, with everything going on with the virus, we've got these data boards and stuff where we're seeing the death toll and we're seeing the recovery rates and stuff. Right. People using some of that data and taking a risk and, okay, we're going to do the 45-day uh, protocol. It right. looks like things are improving, so confidence improves, spending goes up, et cetera, and then hopefully you're ranking towards the top is what you're saying. Yeah, um, tracking data points in terms of the actual virus itself, I think that's very smart. Um, 
I've been doing that for, so I live in Vancouver uh, for our province for a little while and just seeing the numbers go up and increase and predicting where it's going to be next next week. And right now the, the, the curve still hasn't flattened. It's still going like this. So things are not yeah. going to get any better anytime soon. Exactly. It'll get better before it gets worse. Um, <clears throat> Casey, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, when I look at opportunity, I, I, I believe that there's opportunity on the Amazon platform even currently, I think spending a, a good amount of time looking at what is selling um, and what isn't selling, you know, maybe through brain analytics or looking through the Amazon bestsellers list are, are great ways of identifying what's selling well. But yeah, it's very difficult to understand how long this is going to last. Um, looking at opportunity, I, I've never been anybody, I've, I've never been, um, you know, one of the people that's been a huge advocate of selling off Amazon because I've seen a lot of people struggle doing that. Hmm. But right now, uh, it, one word that comes to mind when I think of opportunity is diversification. So I think diverse, looking at diversifying your supply chain uh, is, is something that would be considered both defensive and offensive. Uh, as we've seen a number of issues with sourcing from China recently, I think a lot of people are starting to wake up and looking at some, um, finding suppliers in other um, channels like uh, Mexico or Taiwan or Vietnam or India or Pakistan. Um, a, a friend of mine, Nathan Rasnick, uh, who um, at Sourceify is a huge advocate of this. I think diversifying channel. Um, so right now, um, because of delayed shipping times, we're seeing uh, some significant sales increases in Walmart and eBay. Uh, so I've never been a huge advocate of again, diversifying from the Amazon space because there's so much opportunity still on Amazon. But I think that uh, some of these changes are gonna be lasting. So as people start to become more familiar with shopping on Walmart, uh, eBay, or some of these other channels, um, I think some of that will, uh, there will be some residue of that in the future. And so I think looking at diversifying to these other channels, especially if you're a player that's seeing your, your sales in your market decline on Amazon, now is the time if you look at opportunity costs to start looking at some of these other channels. And then um, thirdly, from a diversification standpoint, diversifying your ability to fulfill. So going and finding a 3PL, my favorite is deliver uh, with two R's um, and being able to go and um, you know, uh, diversify your ability to fulfill. These are all things that are gonna set you up not only to take uh, advantage of this kind of short-term opportunity, but is also laying a lot of kind of groundwork for these long-term opportunities. Once your brand matures and you wanna go and fulfill in these other channels, now you have the supply chain to back you up. Now you have the uh, ability to fulfill and you've spent time building out your, your listings or whatever on these other channels. And so you're taking advantage both of the short term and the long term. Cool. Evelyn, you got a well chest. Prime goes back to the two or three days delivery. What would you do in that situation in terms of ranking? So as I said, to me, things didn't change much. Yeah. The only thing that changed is that certain products got pushed to the top of the category. Mm -hmm. People start focusing on this emergency supply products and stuff so a lot of the products on the main categories in these keywords now occupy on the top of the space but the rest of it is not much affected pretty much it's all all the same and i think um, algorithm doesn't change that fast like we know that if amazon tries to change a little bit something on the algorithm it can end up losing billions of dollars a year mm -hmm. right so so they don't um quickly change something in the algorithm in a response in the current situation, right? It's very difficult for them to decide uh, what they can do in the situation. So to me, the um, the essence of the algorithm, it's, it's still the same. Everything works exactly the same. It's just the, product, the products that are um, searched for right now and purchased more often will be surfacing on the top, like, uh, uh, we've seen like in the last two weeks, aloe vera become very popular because people will start looking for sanitizer to do it yourself, sanitizers, recipes. Mm. Uh, so a product that was not very uh, popular uh, in general, now is on the top in, in brand analytics. So, yeah. but there are like maybe 10 or 20 products like that right now that surfaced on the top. Um, and it's just a matter of time that they will sell back down to the normal. Yeah, I was going to say, if we change switch gears here, I was going to bring that up. If you look at um, 
brand analytics data is all over the shop. Now, what do you do if you want to try and prepare for the future? Where people are on lockdown, they're at home, they want to get ready for the future, but the data is everywhere. So using all the tools that we've got, as fantastic as they are, how are you able to extrapolate that information and make sensible decisions for something to come up in two or three months' time, say, Casey? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just difficult to know how long this is going to last. If this is, you know, some people are talking about getting the uh, vaccine 18 months from now uh, to the general public and be, there being concern of an outbreak happening anywhere between now and 18 months if we break quarantine. Uh, th these are people like Bill Gates and, and, and stuff talking about this. So there's some people that, that believe this, this to some degree is going to last a very long time in which there is significant amount of opportunity to go and start sourcing these products, get them into Amazon or your own fulfillment and start selling them yourselves. If this is something that's going to last 45 days, then using this data to go and source new products, you know, everybody else will get there at some point too. And so, uh, I, I, generally, I'm never an advocate of the obvious answer just because everybody else is doing it. And if everybody else is doing it, it's going to be very competitive. So uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm rather undecided on. Yeah. Uh, Paul, let's bring you in. Sorry, I've I kind of left you out the mix. What's your take? So pretty much right now, I think we're actually in a really good opportunity because one strategy we've been doing for the past two years, and it's never actually failed for us, is that when we are doing rebates and the customer does the whole search find bar, we instruct them to click on the Amazon ad. They don't know they're clicking on the Amazon ad. They think it's organic listing. They don't know the difference. But we make sure we are bidding very, very high to make sure we get the number one spot for the Amazon ad. So what happens now is the customer goes and purchases through the Amazon ad, and they do a search find bar to get the, which is fine, right? The customer doesn't know the difference. But what's happened now is that your ACOS for that, for that campaign drops. It's engineered ACOS. But it's an extra data point and relevancy for that keyword. And then if you look at look at your search and reports, look at all your best converting keywords. You will you will, um as a byproduct of that, those will be your best organically ranked keywords. So this shows that Amazon ads show a big place right now in your in your keyword relevancy. So I mean, right now, if you're saying that essential, no one's gonna be bidding on Amazon ads or anything. So now you can actually start running through doing search find bar, doing Amazon ads, sorry, Facebook ads to get the search find bar, so on and so forth. The caveat being is that there's a long delivery time. So your customers, I mean your Facebook customers might complain. You know what, suck it up deal with it. Um, it's up to you to absorb that uh, advertising cost for the Facebook ads because now it's more expensive because long delivery time and people won't take it up. But once you absorb that and actually now if you get them to purchase through your Amazon ad for that keyword in search find bar, your relevancy goes through the roof. I mean, for us, we've taken products, one of our products right now is top of page one for its keyword. It's over $100, the product, and the average price of page one product is $20 mm -hmm. because all those sales came in through the, um, the Amazon ad through search find buy. So right now it's actually a good opportunity because most people have turned off the Amazon ads because there's no need for it. But turn mm -hmm. on if you're doing search find buy with rebates. And yeah, um, it locks in the relevancy. And then uh, when you have the war chest ready, you can just go 10X on your Amazon ads, 10X on your rebates, do that for about two or three weeks and you will solidify your, your place in um, page one, spot number one. And even what's nice as well is that that campaign will be cheap for the next subsequent weeks because you, you kind of fooled Amazon thinking that this is all organic purchases clicking on your ad. Cool. Sounds good. I'm going to say hello to a few people. Otto Kelm's here. Tin is here. Eric Payne. How are you doing, guys? Seamus is here. Augustus, Ben Panther. Who else have we got? Howard Ty. We'll have you on tomorrow. Uh, Zach Leonard. Lots of uh, industry people. Uh, Barkus Patty's here. Roger Percy. Who else we got? Steve's there, Stephen Bingham, Katharina. Um, guys, if you've got any questions, happy to get these answered by the guys here. There's always one, isn't there? Anyone need Amazon verified <laughs> review and keyword ranking? <laughs> Fucking hell, it's nothing <laughs> sacred. <laughs> Mate, I'll block you. Now, fuck off. Right, okay. Maybe we should have had him on the call. Maybe should have had him on the <laughs> call, yeah. And he could have just sold us a load <laughs> of fucking cheap shit, yeah. Um, right, okay. So, <laughs> moving over. I've lost my train of thought now because he's done me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Evelyn, right. Let's go brand analytics. You, you, you look you under look the hood. Oh, this 
bit of light. Oh, background that? feedback feedback uh brand analytics you look under the hood quite often there um what are you seeing in terms of how the data's gone crazy and when can you see it start to normalize and it's more trustworthy to do to plan forward well it's all this speculation right can't can't say what will happen and, and stuff right now everything is crazy in the brand analytics uh, as i mentioned this top keywords appeared everywhere yeah people getting, getting, getting crazy about toilet paper and aloe yeah. vera you know um and pasta yeah. stuff that nobody's buying before <laughs> so <laughs> so i can't really say uh, what will happen like it it's all over the map yeah i'm just waiting for the next two weeks i'm not doing anything not touching anything just observing yeah, observing. All right. So what I mean, just because you're observing, what preparation? I'll go around the room. People sitting at home now, what should they be uh, preparing? Like what what things can they be doing brushing up wise, skill wise or implementing so they're ready? So when things do tidy up and there is a bit more room to play, um, what should they be doing in terms of strategies there? So starting with you, Paul. So uh, best bang for your buck is do, a, uh, is do a search find buy with rebates. So if they can just spend the next week or two researching the best flows, the best Facebook ads. And even mm. right now, what could be a good idea is that just do engagement ads. Just run, mm. a, run an ad uh, to your audiences, seeing who your best audience is, and then warm them up so once you can actually open the gates, you can just say to them, offers open now, get now for 50% off, not a full 100% off, whichever. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Yeah, I think it depends on where you currently are in your Amazon FBA journey. If you are someone who's already selling on Amazon right now and you have stock at another warehouse or 3PL, I think something that you should be doing today, if it's in the non-essential stuff, is literally getting your listing switched to FBM. Um, I don't have a whole lot of data points. It's just yesterday we switched to that 2PM and we saw our sales increasing quite rapidly. So I'm going off of that and it does make a little bit of sense. Um, if you're someone who is in the product research phase, so if you're literally trying to find your first product on Amazon right now, um, I feel a little bit, <laughs> little bit bad because even if you um, look at, I, I think all the data is just everywhere right now. It's 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 a complete mess. Um, so it's gonna make your product research a little bit harder to do. Some of the products that were selling well during the normal times could have a really high BSR now because everything else got pushed down. So it's just. It, it's a big mess right now, man. And to be honest, like I would probably just brush up on my skills in terms of maybe taking like hopping on sessions like this and understanding what's going on, understanding what people are saying, and then probably just chill for the next two weeks. And then when like kind of what everyone said, when 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 the dust settles a little bit, that's probably when you um yeah, that's probably when you want to jump back on and 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 get this well started. So. Cool. I've got a few questions here. Let me just quickly ask here, apart from any seller need, Amazon verified reviews and keyword ranking. We won't answer that question. Um, so the, here we got here. Do you have any 3PL recommendations? Um, I think Casey said a good one. Delivery, right? Mm -hmm. Deliver? Deliver. Deliver. Yeah, with two R's. With two R's. Yeah. With two R's. I use um, a company called Ship Fusion. Uh, yeah. There's also Ship Bob. Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure if they're, I'm not sure if, because the integration process is quite long. It's not like, oh, let, let me use you today. Let's get it, everything started. There's an account manager. You got to do all the setup and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if they're taking new clients on right now, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt for you to reach out to them and ask. Yeah. Uh, um, go on, Danny, go on. if you don't mind, I saw a question I want to actually ask Tom about, because he asked you my, my better opinion, way better opinion. Than, yeah. so, so Tom, the question was, I think it's, should they make both FBA and FBM right now? If they if they do that have, hold FBA and FBM, how much cheaper should the FBM price be? And if the FBM price dictates the price of the listing, will the keyword ranking drop because it's not like the FBA? Yeah, thing. our our listing did not drop. So uh, actually, it dropped by one spot. But yesterday, when I looked back up, it, it actually went back up for our main keyword. So in terms of the ranking between FBA and FBM, we didn't see a noticeably increase, a uh, decrease, or increase at all. Uh, so that's good on, on that side. And in terms of uh, what we did was we literally switched the FBA listing to a FBM. So we only have one ASIN right now that is FBM. Um, if you want to create a brand new listing and then so if you still want to have your FBA listing, so that's your original listing, but then you want to have another FBM listing, 
then I think you have to create a brand new ASIN, meaning you have to re-rank that ASIN and get more reviews oh, okay. and so on and so forth, which is pretty counterproductive right mm -hmm. now, in my opinion. So we just switched everything over to FBM. So one ASIN, one FBM, and that's it. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Uh, shouldn't it be easier to rank now and stick the ranking as everyone is selling less non-essential products? I think Paul alluded to that. Do you want to run yeah. through that again? Um, so pretty much, yeah, what we're seeing right now is even in the, the non-essential items are holding rank. But that's purely because um, what they're doing right now is I tell all my all our, all our customers in our group and stuff is that make sure, guys, please, if you're doing rebates, bid crazy heavy on the Amazon ad. So when the customer clicks on Amazon ad, so the keyword relevancy is sticking um, and actually it's staying put even after they stop to turn off the rebates. It really is working well, but now it's down to, again, is that the way rebates are evolving and way Amazon evolves, it's more data points. So not just rebates alone are as good as they were. Now it's kind of like rebates with, with, the, with Amazon ads as well, and maybe even add to cart as well, all those type of um, issues. Yeah, so if you can do all of those, yeah, you, you will stick. Okay. If, if I could just go cool. add to that real quick, I, I would just say, yeah, if you are someone that has a bunch of inventory or, you know, knows a seller that has a bunch of inventory, whether it's in essential or non-essential products, yeah, now is the time to run these ranking promotions because not very many people have the inventory. Not very many people are, are selling well in those products. So now you should do it. It's just a matter of, well, now you can do it. It's just a matter of should you do it. Cool. Question on the screen. Are you using a super URL for launching? If so, which type? Evelyn. So here's the rule that we're doing. Um, if you have a product that is beyond page five, if you do search find buy, it's not working very well. And there is a logical reason behind that is that in Amazon's eyes, it can look unnatural. People skipping five pages going through uh, the products and then clicking on a specific product on page five. So at that point, um, search find buying might not work very well. Um, so the rule is if your product is on page one or page two, uh, search find buy works the best. If not, we, uh, we're using super URLs for launching and brand, brand URL specifically has been working pretty well. Uh, pretty much all URLs work the same. Um, the problem with um, many people report URLs are not working uh, is because there's been a recent change in the URL structure. And a lot of the things, um, a lot of the, the URLs that people use are still like old information. Um, but we've tested many different URLs in many different scenarios. Um, they all work pretty much the same if you know how to use them. Uh, I think the safest way for people who are not very experienced and technical is just stick to the brand URL. Uh, however, there is a big problem with the brand URL is that it will not open on mobile. And we know that a lot of a lot of people shop on mobile over 60% now. Hmm. Um, so... Uh, so there, with the brand, what you're saying with the brand URL, you can't deep link and it redirects to mobile. It goes to the desktop. Correct. They've got a line, sign in and it just puts uh, more friction in the way. Correctly. So every URL now that um, you'll be using has to be a deep link URL. So that makes sure that it will open on a mobile device. Yeah. Sorry, sense. real quick. I, Go on. I keep adding in. But uh, for those that are not aware of what a deep link is, yeah, uh, as Danny said, it's a link that when on mobile, will just open up in the ManyChat browser, if, if, assuming you're using ManyChat. And the problem with that is that they're not signed in. It looks very unnatural. So we saw much better results when we switched over to using these deep links, which automatically pop open the app. The customer is logged in. It's a very natural experience from the Amazon perspective. Now, so the question is, how do I get these deep links? Pixelfy recently has now given you the option in uh, their um, URL setup for you to ch check a box. I think it's automatically checked by default that will make it a deep link. So you shouldn't be using a straight up two-step URL that you paste into ManyChat or whatever. Uh, you should go use a, a service that allows for deep linking. Beautifully put. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what we're doing too, actually. Yeah, go um, on into me. Apologies, yep, Karen. We take... Um, so in our experience, rank fluctuation seems to occur when we overutilize one particular... Uh, means even search find by 
And I think just like Ivelin said, it looks unnatural if like 95% of all your sales come through the search bar, since that's not usually how it's going to happen. Um, so how we do it is we mix it up between search find buy and uh, we actually have been using the share URLs. Um, the problem, and, and, and then we put those through pixel five. So they're deep links. Uh, the problem with those though, is that, um, as Ivelin had said there, you know, Amazon's been changing the URL structures. Yeah. They changed those pretty regularly. Like literally within a month, I saw three different changes. And on top of that, they're also time stamped. So you have to actually be diligent and going in there and changing them out. But if you do it from uh, your mobile device, it looks, there are certain situations where they look supernatural, um, you know, cause you're talking about like using an SMS link, somebody opens it from their phone. The SMS link was generated by a mobile device, which does actually add to the tag in the URL, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you set up all these scenarios where it looks really natural and those have been working super well for us. I'm with Anthony on that. A uh, quick correction here. Um, so if you do a share URL, it doesn't matter if you do email share or SMS share or Pinterest share or whatever. It's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. They just add a reference to that URL, um, which if Amazon sees that, that it's that the visitor is coming through that link and they have that reference uh, sent to the server, they know that it's coming uh, from, a, from the shared URL. However, um, um, you cannot just attach a keyword to that URL. So, it, you know, a lot of people just do, um, they just attach K equals a keyword to a shared key, uh, URL, but it's a detailed page URL. So this is not, this will not count for, for ranking. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure why then, uh, but it's been working. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we just happen to have a magic touch. It's giving you um, a social signal, basically. So if you use other methods of ranking, like it's, if you said, if you mix, for example, different strategies at the same time, all these clicks that come from, from this URL will count as a social signal. So it will give higher ranking to, to all of the rest that you're doing. Okay, that brings us swiftly into another question there. Are there any ranking factors based on traffic sources? So, for example, traffic from Facebook ranking better than Pinterest, etc. So there's this thing that is called quality that is attached to everything uh, with A9, right? Mm -hmm. Every Everything has specific quality or weight, as Amazon is calling it. Um, so the quality of the external traffic, of course, matters. Um, as well as even the browser, like with people coming from a Tor browser, which is usually used for hacking and stuff, you know, you can naturally see that this is not a quality customer. Anthony told before also, he was talking about the, the quality of the customers also, right? So this weight is attached to everything A9. Uh, so yeah, quality of the traffic is very important. Um, if you send someone from, um, the go go for example advertising to amazon it will have very low effect but if you use pinterest or um, youtube for example as a traffic source the effect will be much higher hmm. makes sense so if that was for instance a scoring system it might be that uh, facebook has a marker of five and then pinterest could be seven and youtube could be 10 and other sources like that is what you're saying so what they say, so what you're seeing is that the traffic that's sent there, the, the Amazon will give that signal uh, more of a priority depending on the type of source it's coming from. So for instance, with Facebook, it's more like a social traffic, but think about Pinterest, there's an opportunity for the purchase power along with influencers from YouTube, which may give it a high accreditation. Usually where you have video presentation platforms yep. like YouTube, Pinterest and Facebook, of course, yeah. uh, chances are that you've given much more information about your product and you mm -hmm. engage the customer much better than on some other non-video non platforms. Yeah. So this gives more weight well, to the referent. Sounds good. Anyone want to add to this before I move on? 
Yeah, I mean, just to kind of echo, I we believe variety is is pretty important. So yeah, you know, even if a product's in the top fifteen results or so, uh, we we won't use like pure search find by. We'll use page one URL. We we like to switch it up because. Uh, I believe Amazon is looking for sameness of traffic. If everybody is doing the exact same thing, um, that looks unnatural. My my one question to Ivlin actually was, you know, you said if a product's in the top two pages, then you'll use search find by. The majority of shoppers, well, depending on your traffic source, I guess, uh, are are mobile shoppers. So page two of the desktop is, you know, what uh, up to like. 98th result or 96th result or something like that, which could be like page five on mobile. So do, do you pay attention? Like, do you only do page one and two on mobile or will you go back to like, say page five then on mobile? Um, so if, if shoppers are shopping specific product and category from mobile, we only track from mobile because as we've seen that maybe over 75% um, so when we use keyword tracking, we don't even keyword track on desktop anymore. We just track from, from mobile, uh, because if, if you shop, if you try to rank something from desktop, for example, it, it will show for the customers on desktop. But if you rank on mobile, so I, what I mean is that, um, yeah. it's not page five on desktop doesn't correspond to 95 on mobile. It depends how people shop. Uh, it you can be on page three on mobile, but you can be on page five on desktop. That makes sense. Yep. Cool. Excellent. So here from Stefano, how to launch a product which is out of stock? Is it, does it make sense to use H10 data to get the numbers of the rebates? Anthony, you know H10 quite well. Where would you sit with that? I think he's probably referring to CPR numbers. CPR yes. numbers were invented and created during a time of deep discount promotions, which yep. um, I think most people would agree based on observations uh, rank differently than full price purchases. Um, so I would say if if that's the only number that you have to go off of, you should use it as a baseline, but you need to course correct and figure out what what your specific niche is like what what it requires because I don't think the number is going to be accurate all the time right now. Yeah. To, to sorry, to add to that, we we oh. I'm just like taking over, sorry guys. No, 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 uh, you get stuck in. You're welcome. <laughs> uh we um, we see better results when uh, we uh, we spread out the promotions. So uh, the old strategy was like, you know, seven to 10 days or something like that. Uh, the longer the promotion, the better we see the ranking uh, move up as well as stick. And so uh, a lot of times we're running 14 to 28 day promotions and we're willing to give away less units on a per day basis for an individual keyword. We see a lot better results um, that way. Anyone yeah, for me, pretty much the same. Um, the sparks don't work anymore. We're looking at least uh, two week ranking times. Now, again, also that varies though because the age of the product. And so, if it's uh, to to quote Anthony, if it's in the honeymoon period, then it's much easier to rank and hold. Whereas if it's um, established product, we, we recommend at least two weeks, even longer sometimes, depending on the niche. <laughs> Uh, Tony Sager asks, should Amazon also suspend new seller applications in the current crisis if current sellers cannot ship uh, ship goods in? I think with Amazon, maybe my take is business as usual. A lot of people that set up a seller account won't necessarily launch straight away. They'll sign up and I don't know what the exact numbers are, but I'm, I'm sure not everyone. It's like when people do courses, that only a percentage of them will go forward, you know. Uh, so it depends on the numbers there. But So Danny, I just want to add in something there, right? Is that mm -hmm. Amazon w w won't ever stop that because literally is that over the past month, they literally opened up now applications to be from South Africa to apply to sell on Amazon. Great. Right. We've been waiting for this for, for years. And then the staff haven't been actually trained in how to accept South African paperwork. So right. literally, that, that's open to us, but we can't actually get an account. 
So I mean, like, uh, but they're still charging us monthly fees. But yeah, oh, that's, handy. that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, Jess says here, I'm launching my first product this week. What launch strategies would be best for me at this time? I'm in the baby category, but non-essential. My competitors are showing four. 20, oh, right, so 21st of the fourth ship date, and there's a few that say two days shipping. I have some units in stock, but most of them are still in the FC transfer, so I'm not active yet. I'd sit tight. What's your, uh, what's your take, guys? Um, for me, minimum, I would say uh, just start up an automatic ad, uh, Amazon ad campaign just, just to gather the keywords that you think are relative and then see what Amazon thinks your product really is and look at the search terms of what they're reporting. If they're, those search terms are correct, aligned with your product, then yeah, Amazon's spot on, they know what your product is. If it's not, then uh, you, you need to change your keywords, your title, everything, so Amazon knows what your listing should be. And, and then once you know that, move on and start, if you can, do rebates, um, start doing aggressive Amazon ads, so on and so forth. Cool. Anyone else want to pitch in there? I think it would be a good time for you to just start building up your foundation of your listing in terms of trying to get reviews, get reviews, get reviews, and and, mm. and ultimately, you know, even if you rank on page one with very little reviews, your conversion rate is not going to be nearly as high as your competitors. So I think just take this time slow. Um, don't try to be on page one in two weeks. Uh, really, you know, do what Paul said in terms of um, doing PPC to see your relevancy, as well as taking the time to try to get some reviews. That way you have a solid foundation so that when things turn back to normal, you're ready to launch. Anyone who had? All good. Uh, Dr. Yev Merisenko, we know him in the community, does a lot of great work. He said, check where 3PL warehouses are located. Sales rank is higher and better diversified if they're distributed your product to multiple sites. So I think he's going to go back to the the whole thing in and around Geo rank. Uh, Steve Simon said, deliver has mixed reviews in his experience, but he's saying snapshot is another good 3PL to look at um there was an earlier one that i wanted to get back to which is about asins i can't find um which was done by ben let me just quickly find it because he was talking about the asin but making a different variation one second um ben if you're out there can you repost your uh, explanation for that ben valence yeah so he said no you need another asin for the same uh, sorry you need another skew for the same asin could you explain your take on that and then we can chew the fat over that uh is there any more people out there who's got any questions that i've missed before we move on no cover jess let's have a look just going through these here stefano recovered ah here we go as of today no new coupons are allowed through april 5th think ads or promotions will be paused or limited to anthony what's your take i mean given the fact that amazon is attempting to prioritize certain items it makes sense that they would not allow people to respond to that by creating coupons mm -hmm. um, attempting to therefore push their offers in front of what amazon deems uh, a priority right now yeah as far as ads though like you know that that's a huge source of their revenue so i feel like that would be a much bigger decision for them to make i feel like they probably you know would have to they would have to think really hard on that one. I mean, Amazon does make emotional decisions at times. We've seen them be very reactionary to things, but I don't know if that's going to be one of them. Uh, but promotions will probably see continue to fluctuate if the situation gets worse. So that's my Tom? take. You got a view on this? Yeah. Sorry. Did you say my name? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. As of today, no new comp. Coupons yeah. allow through April 5th. Do you want to give us your feedback? I mean, like, it's, yeah, I think kind of what Anthony said is just it makes sense if Amazon is limiting everything else that basically if it's non-essential or if it's, yeah, if it's non-essential, then they're basically limiting as much as, you know, promotions as possible. Um, yeah, it's just a very weird, it's a, it's a, it's a very weird time right now. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, man. It's a yeah. weird, weird time right now. And, and, I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon comes out and do other things in the next upcoming weeks as well, depending on how the situation goes in the U.S. So I think it's really important to follow what's going on in the U.S. with regards to the, uh, the COVID-19 cases and as well as what the government is doing, because that's really going to have a huge impact on all the businesses, not only Amazon, but obviously everything else. But um, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Miguel says my listing has been uh, is shipping delivery time for the first of May or April twenty second. All my inventory is already in FBA. How do I start FBM if all my inventory is inside of Amazon? I don't think you. I don't think you can. I think you have to do a removal uh, removal order and get everything removed to a three PL and then get the three PL to do FBM. I don't. I don't think there's a way for if, if your listings are still in Amazon. I don't think there's a way to do FBM. You got to retrieve everything, which costs you fifty cents per product, I believe. Yeah, and then they ship it all over the country in shitty boxes that didn't. You know, it didn't go in as it should. It didn't come out as the way it went in. So yeah. you got to repackage <laughs> everything up as well. Yeah. Um, anyone else got any thoughts on that, Evelyn? Any hacks? I'm not sure if multi-channel fulfillment is working hmm. because it will be pretty much the same, the same system, right? So, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe maybe they can try. You know, also mm -hmm. removal will take a while. Sometimes it yeah. takes 15 days to make the to receive the removal, so it will it will be long. So I'm, I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it makes sense. Like, I don't think it makes sense if, if you have products, um, if you don't have units available outside of Amazon right now, I don't think it makes sense to do a removal, pay the 50 cents, ship it through a 3PL, set everything up, wait for mm -hmm. two weeks, and then try to resell because I, I, you don't know what's going to happen um, yep. in, mm -hmm. in two weeks. So I, I don't think it makes sense from that. Perspective. Yeah, sometimes it makes sense to sit and wait. Um, what Evelyn said Cool. is possible though i don't know if amazon would look at that as manipulation uh and shut it down but it would be something i would i would try so create an fbm listing and then just go in and manually create multi-channel fulfillment orders through amazon mm. like it's manual that sucks especially if you get a bunch of orders but mm. it's so it's, anthony i'm doing that right now is uh because i sell a kid's brand uh, and it's not essential so i can't really make my traction right now i'm running facebook ads to my shopify store make the sale in there and then it's plugged in through ShipStation to amazon fba and then i checked um right now it's like two or three the two or three day delivery times so right now i'm just pushing facebook ads to try and sell their units and get and get, and get some money yeah. back right well now. yeah so you you're you're, you're doing multi-channel fulfillment through yeah. shopify so yeah. that should mean that you could also technically do it on amazon too but you would have to manually you can't automate yeah, it manually yeah. that way. And, and the thing is i, I mean I, I i checked yeah and the thing is like um i don't know how long we'll be able to do multi-channel fulfillment it could be yeah. maybe a few days like yeah so to make hay while sun shines if you can hmm. yeah. makes sense how ben valance posted you can do this by adding another condition in edit inventory which i think he was saying is that instead of using two asins as what was Tom was saying there is that use the one AC and create two SKUs, but edit in inventory. I think that's Ben. Can you correct me if that's uh, if that's wrong? Uh, while we do that, let's move on to another question here. Do you think mini chat rebate automation with a two step URL to launch for a few weeks until you get to page two to three and then switch to search find buyer is still a good launch strategy or should you launch immediately with search find buy directed towards the sponsored products? I mean, timing-wise, neither is great, is it? But let's imagine if the timing was okay and Prime's back to normal and the scares passed in the US and UK. What would you guys suggest would be the best of the two strategies? I think, I think for me, I've always used the first approach, which is essentially uh, use a super URL to get the product up to page two, um, hmm. sometimes page one, page two, and then once you're page one, page two, make sure that you switch over to search find and buy but i do want to say that um th some things have changed since i would say even earlier this year and that's kind of what casey alluded to earlier which is essentially switching up the different super urls and kind of what anthony said as well it makes it seem very weird if 95 percent of your purchases come from the search bar because people don't search like that so if you want to go ahead with that strategy make sure that you trick amazon by using a lot of different super urls add them to the deep link that works a lot better than just sending one super url for two weeks because you're not going to see that better that much of a result um, using that method cool anyone else want to add anything you can also do search find by with the brand so like there's some bleed over effect if you rank for brand plus keyword right into just the keyword uh that's another strategy we've done for like brand new products 
because uh, they'll almost always immediately rank page one for like main keyword and then their brand or vice versa. So I would probably just mix up a few of those. Cool. Uh, Fabian says, hey, curious to see if you face this. Launch two exact products at the same time, same niche, same price points, same keywords in the listing content and back end, and one of them ranking much better than the other one. Same bids in the PPC campaigns too. If yes, what's the reason for this? Casey? Uh, so I'd be curious if he's – so, you know, bids and what you deliver for are two different things. I'd be curious if you're uh, delivering for a lot less on the product that is uh, ranking better. We've definitely seen this in PPC where well, one product has uh, is delivering for much cheaper – uh, CPCs because it, Amazon just sees it as a lot more relevant. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd be very curious how you've tried to push ranking. Maybe there's a quality of customer difference there. I'd want to make sure that your products are in the same subcategory because subcategory is a huge ranking factor right now that not enough people are paying attention to. Um, overall, I, I do think that Amazon is paying a lot less attention to the exact content of the listing and they're paying a lot more attention to subcategory and the way customers are shopping, finding and buying that product. Um, but outside of that, there's so much in the Amazon ranking algorithm that it sometimes we see this, we have two products very similar, one product will do really well, the other product will not do nearly as well and they're very similar. So I don't know if anybody else has a, but you know, there's, there's Oz's curtain and we don't get to see everything that's going on behind it, unfortunately. Okay, he says Fabian's just dropped in here, no ranking, just launch, no reviews to, just testing both. Yeah, so is, is the branding, is like the packaging. Here's the thing is we, spend so much time paying attention to the way Amazon's algorithm treats everything. But you, you got to remember, this is all driven by buyer behavior. I've mm -hmm. seen literally the exact same bottle of Garcinia Cambogia, right? Hundreds of them, same serving size. It's the same product. The listings are all geared towards the same keywords, but you know, several of them fail miserably and one does really, really well. Why does that happen? It was because the, the label looked nicer, you know? It could, like, also, it could be completely random behavior. Mm -hmm. Imagine that your inventory is in uh, California and that same day, five people from California bought the product. So the inventory is close to the customer. This rank this keywords higher, while on the next day, keywords on the other products were coming from New York. So it, it will give you that initial start on that product and yep. then it sustains ranking based on that specific location. And also time's going to factor as well. How long have you been testing it? Been running, if you just launched, was it been a week? Like I'd say look at the data over the month to see the performance as well because you should never look at data over a week anyway. Should you? You've got to reach a statistical significance at some point. So you need to benchmark your test properly. You need to be very tailored and detailed on what you're doing. And like the guy said, or Anthony said, is that you've got a different label, better packaging, et cetera. Like Evelyn said, if you're looking at uh, the distribution to the facility centers could be mapped differently. You could send the products in at different time, but when they're available, when they're not available, so there's a lot of things at play that could make a difference. So you should document everything there. Um, my, yeah, sorry, real quick. My, my advice would just be that, you know, there's a lot of kind of uh, stuff that we don't know what uh, stuff entails exactly happening. Um, the more you actually go and are intentional and kind of control the rankings or running promotions or whatever, um, then you, you should be able to, to move those up. Scarlett says, uh, since many listings are switching to FBM, is FBM purchase as strong as FBA purchases for keyword ranking? You go first, Evelyn. Um, no, it's not for, for many reasons. Maybe there are like five, six reasons that FBM is lower in the ranking. But again, um, there is no, it, it will be all equalized at some point because there will be many sellers selling FBM right now. Um, so nothing to do about it. Okay. Also, uh, if, if someone cool. isn't selling, but they have FBA listings, it's not going to be as good as someone that's selling a lot, even if it's FBM. Hmm. Yeah. Anthony? No, that's, I mean, you're all in on that. Already, the sentiment's already been expressed. Like we know 
thanks to, I mean, we knew this before, but we know even more now, thanks to Dr. Yev and his work with studying GeoRank, that mm -hmm. uh, location is, you know, availability is a huge factor. And FBA, uh, because it gives customers prime will always be preferred, you know, because Amazon can control it. They know, like, I can put this in front of you. You're, you know, 30 miles away. I can make sure that you're going to get it on the time that I'm saying they have so much less control with FBM, but like Casey just said, it'll, it'll equalize because, uh, because that control also leads to limitations that currently Amazon is imposing. Right. Uh, Gabriel says, how many long tails will you wrap to impact the main keywords at the same time during a ranking campaign? I think what he means here is you've got your head search term and then the variants underneath, maybe, Gabriel, or are these a separate set of search terms, but with lower velocity? Um, Casey, do you want to pick this one apart? Um, I mean, typically, we, we haven't seen, so I was saying sameness of traffic is is important we haven't seen at least a difference in ranking. So let's say one product is going after uh, one keyword versus uh, a single product going after multiple keywords. We haven't seen better performance when we go after multiple keywords. It sounds like maybe uh, Anthony had, so maybe he'd be better to answer the question. We, we've done well just um, ranking for a single term. Cool. Anthony? I don't I apologize. I don't know that I fully understand this question. Okay. So there's two points to this question, I think, or there's one main point, but I'm just trying to decipher is whether he's talking about, he's got a main search term and there's the variance of that main term underneath, you know, could be, I don't know, a spatula blue, spatula red, et cetera, rather than a wooden or metal spatula. Right. So it's either his question is, do you use the, like the rising ties effect of, long tail search terms across the board related to the product or related to the main search head search uh, keyword and then the variance of that underneath. So he's saying, what do you do at that time for the ranking of the campaign? How many of these keywords would you use? Okay. So if I'm focused on a specific main keyword, yeah. usually I only pick one long tail to hit until the main keyword is in uh, an attainable distance. Uh, I understand the logic behind choosing multiple long tails that have that one keyword in it and maybe, um, you know, multiple rising tides. We're not completely sure that like that's the case. Um, it's definitely worth testing, but I will say that if you do reverse ASINs on all of your biggest competitors, you'll notice that they rank for thousands and thousands usually of keywords on page one most of them long tail. So at the end of the day, want, like ranking for many long tails, regardless of its effect on your main keyword might also be a good strategy. I mean, at very least, that's what the biggest sellers are, are, are currently taking advantage of. Yeah, and just th uh, also just to, uh, not path correct, but I think what he's talking about really is what goes on in the US. I mean, if you try and express long tail from US to Europe, UK, there isn't much depth to the market in comparison because of the size of the market and the variance of the search volume of the main key keywords and the long tail. So it might work better in the US, but there you're a little bit limited in the, the UK and stuff. A, a good place to start really outside of just like the main tools is look at your brand analytics reports. It won't be as good on super, super, super niche products but uh, a lot of the brand analytics uh, search terms you'll find in there the ones that are not in there will generally give you maybe 10 15 searches a day so bear that in mind as well it's nice to have a good collection of long tail which is absolutely fantastic but uh, don't always hang your hat on it if you're looking velocity of sales um travel category is dead right now no shit sherlock <laughs> <laughs> That's Alfred saying there. I know because I've got a product in there as well. So PPC wise, uh, uh, the pools are not to pools, to lower budget or not to lower budget, clicks but no sales. Anthony, I, I know you love PPC. I'll pick on you for this one. Nah, I mean, I'm all about PPC off of Amazon. So, you know, like, like, All right. We, what about you, Tom? We're running a bunch of actually, stuff, uh, like, I, hands off. Yeah, Tom, and then we'll go to Casey because I know he's got PPC chops as well. 
Yeah, uh, I'm not qualified to answer any PBC questions. I suck at it. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll answer some in a minute. But um, Casey, you go. You give well, me I, I guess I have a question for the group. So, so I think one train of thought would be. So we talk a lot about sales history. So anything yeah. you can do to, you know, boost up your sales history right now, even though you're not selling that well. Once once sales start coming back to that category, you will have better sales history than those people that turned it off that were trying to save money. So it's kind of like short term hit for a long term advantage. I I don't know what the thought is. I don't know if that's the right answer, but I'll give you a theory, right? If you've got clicks and you've got no sales, right? If put it in put in perspective, the you know, the the correlation between ranking with PPC 2015 to now, the trajectory's changed a lot, right? A lot of people would argue, and I'd argue the same as well, conversion rate matters. So if you're running yeah. PPC, okay, and you're not getting any conversions, that could have a knock-on effect. So while you're running those to keep and maintain at the top, you might be doing yourself a disservice organically and spending money. So one, test it. Look at your conversion rates. Two, um maybe run your ppc because i've seen a correlation where just turning ppc on you just get a little shift as well it's like mm -hmm. it's a knock-on effect i don't know if i've you've seen that um but maybe yeah lower your bids but make sure that you're able to reach the auction there's no point bringing your bids right down because it's going to be a pointless exercise um leave your budget where it is there's no no necessary justification to reduce the budget uh, at this stage, uh, but just monitor it and make sure that you work in towards your target ACOS as well. Uh, who, what else we got here? Questions wise, Ahmed, uh, we're doing heavy search find buy in the initial uh, launch. Our product does not show up for all ranked keywords for a few hours and then start showing again. What, why is this happening, Evelyn? Well, uh, we're missing a lot of information here to answer. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's important how you track the keywords and from where. Um, so I can't really answer why it's just happening. It's it's most probably the tracking tool that he's using. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you, Amit, if we want to follow up on that question, give us a bit more of a description of what you're doing there. Um, what else have we got here? Should you focus on relatively relativity of keyword before you choose his route? If you choose long tail keywords, you should better start with main keyword and try to find the root in it. I'm not sure if I understand this question. This all depends on how good index your product is before you're starting to confuse Amazon. So I think what you're talking about is relevancy there. And I'm not sure what the root means here. Uh, but if you can re-explain that question, we are happy to ask. Um, so Ahmed's gone back to say we track all of this manually, Evelyn. So going back to the indexing problem. Uh, what was the question? So it probably Let me pull up his question. And then it disappears. Yeah, there we go. So we're doing heavy search five buy for initial launch. Our product does not show up for the ranked keywords for a few hours and then start showing again. So obviously they're coming back and forth into play here. Why is this happening? Well, I haven't I haven't seen that happening, so I can't answer. One yeah. possible reason is if you add your own product uh, to cart, um, you will not be able to see it in the results sometimes. So there's many many things that can happen that you know. Yeah, and if you're looking from the same resources as well, you might go on desktop, you might do it on mobile, you might be logged in, you may not be logged in. Are you looking in a territory where you're, for instance, you've not put in the uh, the local postcode for postal address? Like say you're in the UK and you're looking on the US, that, that can play a part in it as well. So obviously- to, just an make to answer that, this is not something typical. It's not the problem that appears somehow. Yeah. It's something related to your specific situation. So yeah. just one, one thing I want to add there is that if he's doing heavy search find buy, and if what I've seen a lot is that w when we're just doing heavy search find buy, Amazon doesn't know what to do with the keyword, and then we're seeing a drop in the keyword ranking. He may be experiencing that. Again, we don't know what, what's going on out there. There's not enough information on that. But also, if ch checking manually, one thing I'm doing right now, because I don't really trust one tool for keyword tracking, so I'm just using Helium 10 and then cross-referencing that with AMZ Jet from um, Yev. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, 
Evelyn, I don't know actually know about your ranking tools. I need to talk to you about that because I think yours might actually be a good fit as well. Um, and talk to you about that, yeah. Cool. Is there any more questions out there, guys, before we go? Uh, for tracking, Ahmed said we use Chrome incognito mode. Uh, so, okay. We're coming up to an hour and 10 minutes. Hopefully, everyone's been enjoying this. Uh, if there's any more questions, let us know. Quickly say hi to a few people. Jason said, these calls are getting better. Very grateful. Thank you. It's not me. It's these guys. Um, Fabian says, thanks, guys. You rock. Uh, what else have we got questions here? What would you suggest for new sellers who are planning to launch their product? Should it be the right time to launch a new product? We've covered that. We'll, we'll talk about delay and we'll wait for a better time. Um, what else have we got here? Just have a look. Does anyone want to add anything while I'm looking through the questions here, rather than leaving me with an awkward silence? Come on, Paul, do us a joke or something while I'm having a little look through. Uh, yeah, a joke. Nice try. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> All right, so let's do a bit of predicting the future then. So what is you guys? We'll go around the room quickly. Um, what is your take on, and we'll focus on UK and US, yeah um of what is your take on when this is going to the virus you see clearing are you bullish on this and then we're going to have a good q4 or are we going to see a return starting with tom what, what what's your observations at the moment Jeez. um <laughs> <laughs> no pressure mate yeah ah uh, man it's it's tough this is unprecedented i mean i think i think this is yeah it's 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 weird uh it's just a weird weird time for everybody to be alive right now and um, I, I think that it's definitely going to, first of all, I think in the short term, it's definitely going to get a lot worse before it gets better. If you just look at the stats, especially what's going on in the U.S. Yesterday I had 10,000 cases. Today I think it's going to probably be more than that. Um, what I'm looking out for right now is essentially is a, 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 how are the U.S. going to have mass um, testing available for all citizens? Um, mm -hmm. If they don't have that, I, I really can see the cases getting better. But if they do start rolling that out, such as similarly to what they've done in South Korea, being a very good example, setting up phone booth where people can go in, do the swab after seven minutes to get tested. Yeah, I, I, I can't see things getting – and especially with the states right now as well. People are loading up with guns. I mean, what the hell is that about? I mean, we, we know what's out of like, – They're getting that's, ready to go looting, aren't they? I mean, that's really weird. Like people are just buying a lot of guns and stuff. And, what and, Americans and, do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, um, so are people going to start re re being rebellious against the government? Maybe, maybe not. But <laughs> hopefully, I think the best, I think the best case scenario is for us to have a pretty decent Q4. Hmm. Uh, the worst case scenario is this year. Just call it a, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see everybody in twenty twenty one. So, yeah, Paul. I, I guess for me, the main thing to it too is we've spoken a lot about ranking and launching and relaunching right now, but very few Amazon sellers properly budget for a launch. I know that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. That's Amazon 101, but um, the amount of people I've seen do rebates and automate the whole thing and then literally go bankrupt overnight and don't actually realize it. Um, so please, if you think, if you, before you're thinking of doing any type of relaunching or launching, whichever, just actually please put in a spreadsheet, a little budget, how much each rebate will cost you, how much aggressive and passive Amazon ads will be, so on and so forth. Really have a big thing there and saying, okay, now I have a budget, how long can I last for? Because we are not long to last. So before anyone charges anything, figure out how long you can keep your skin in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Casey. What do you think? Are you bullish on this, uh, the virus clearing up? If you take a look at the data from, say, China, I know it's more of a nanny state. I know in the Americans and the guys in the UK, we don't like to take orders off people, do we? So we have to expect it's going to take a bit longer. But are you bullish on a, a good Q4 coming up? Uh, I, I'm a little bearish on how the, the virus will kind of clear up in the US. Again, I, I don't know. Um, I know there's people kind of adamant on each side of the fence. My, my overall take is that change brings opportunity. There's a lot of change here. If you think about how much people are being forced to shop online, I think it's training people that otherwise weren't shopping um, via e-commerce and they were shopping more retail that will be shopping on e-commerce. And again, you know, I mentioned Walmart and these other channels that people are looking to get faster shipping by. I, I think things, no matter what, will be different on the other side of this. And trying to really understand what that difference is, is gonna really set you up for success. 
And it, again, there's, there's a lot of change in trying to understand what is going to happen on the other side is really going to bring a lot of op- op- entrepreneurs, a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Evelyn, what's your take? Um, yeah, based on what governments are doing, I think that, you know, this will take for a while. Like schools in Canada are closed to the end of May, for example. After May, just one month, and then the, the school year, you know, year is over. So uh, it's basically we're looking for, for next year already. Um, I'm optimistic about Q4. Somehow, I think that things will get better by, by Q4. So people should be ready, I think. Like personally, I'm going to ship some inventory to a third party warehouse um, just ready for, for a launch when things get starting to get better and stuff. Um, but um, you, you never know how this will turn out. You know, um, a lot of people say that when, when uh, summer is here, things will start getting better already. Um, so, yeah, we have to be prepared for it. There, there will be for sure a lot of change. Um, and I see a lot of families already homeschooling, uh, online schooling, and um, and even if everything is uh, it's over, I think the fear will still last for a few months after, yeah. uh, which will affect the whole online space. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to be ready for that change. Yeah, I, I just want to add one more thing. I, I think that's why it's so important that during the good times, aka the last month or even from two thousand eight until now that's the time that you need to prepare for an event like this yeah uh, because there's going to be another event in five or ten years that's going to drastically change the landscape of e-commerce or business or anything similar to what this COVID 19 has done to us so i think for you know if there's one big away a uh, big takeaway that i personally got from this experience i mean 2008 i was like 16 i was in high school so it doesn't affect me at all but this has really really impacted all my businesses is that when the good times come back again do not take that time for granted. Like work your ass off because you can save, you know, it's for a rainy day so that when the next time comes, you're you're well prepared. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I remember, Tom, I wasn't in school. I'm a tiny bit older than you. I remember 2008. I spent a year, 14 months launching a, a startup in stealth mode only to serve uh, advertising as its main revenue right in the recession. So that went down really well. So a bit of planning moving forward in terms of your business models is always a good look. Uh, Tiffany, right. So what is tomorrow's topic? Tomorrow we're going to have how a tie on. We're talking black hat and how to protect your neck. Uh, Anthony's uh, knows how well they work together on stuff. Anthony might jump in with us as well tomorrow if he's available. Um, Oxy said, thank you guys. Oxy, I'll see you Friday for drink champs. Uh, Lawrence is asked anyone uh, of the opinion of there, will there be a, a bias or a backlash against products made in China? Good question. Casey. Not sure. I, I definitely am an advocate. I mean, you see uh, Apple, for example, moving a significant amount of their production over to Taiwan. Mm. Um, and I, again, I think diversifying your um, supply chain could pay dividends. I mean, Tariffs are still kind of up in the air. Um, it'll, I think, a big uh, deciding factor will be how the next election goes um, and who our next president is. But I think that at least, you know, from what what I'm seeing, enough people are are concerned or have seen issues having this one manufacturer in China. And you know, labor is a lot cheaper in some of these countries like Vietnam already. And so uh, I, I think it's at least worth looking into. Tom, backlash or bias, what do you think? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be any sort of backlash or any negativity across for products made in China. They are the manufacturer and the factory for planet Earth. Um, let's just, you know, let's call it that. So I, I, I think things are going to continue to go on as they are. And, and um, yeah, I don't think there's going to be any sort of negative back, backlash or anything. Yeah, I think the other thing you've got to look at is not all customers on, on Amazon are price sensitive, but could you imagine that, you know, the backlash suddenly stops when someone sees that the, the prices of the same product or sim- very similar product without differentiation is 20, 30, maybe 40% higher? Maybe the, the backlash will be reduced. They're more likely if they're price sensitive to go to that product. So I agree with you guys there. Okay, so I think we'll wrap there. Uh, it's been an hour and 20 minutes. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Feedback in the uh, 
in the comments. He's been wonderful. I want a big shout out to all the groups that we've posted in today. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, all your knowledge, guys. Um, I know it's a rough time out there, guys, but like you just got to be positive, have a good mindset. We'll get through this together. Uh, I just want to let everyone know how to reach Paul. What's the best way of reaching you if they've got yeah, any The best questions? thing is probably just message me or go through um, so the chat bar to our Facebook page or even the website. Cool. And Tom, for you? Uh, I guess YouTube, Tom Wang, <laughs> or Instagram. Tom's like, don't, don't contact me. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Casey, what's the best uh, uh, way to reach you? Yep, either message me here on Facebook or on my personal Instagram, just Casey Goss. Excellent. Evelyn, you guys Casey's you. phone number here. Se yep. 517. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of education, guys, give all your groups a shout out, please, because there are people listening across the other groups. I want to make sure they're going and consume your content. It's free. Evelyn, you've got the Orange Hat group. Um, Casey, Data Hunters, uh, Paul, Seller Chatbot. Can you remind me, Anthony, of the new group that you got? Signalytics. Oh, Signalytics. Yep. Cool. And who have I missed? I uh, just follow me on Facebook. Just type my name in, and that's good enough. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Um, how do I reach you, Anthony? Um, pretty much any social media platform at Anthony Lee nine nine one. Yeah, but check him out on TikTok. You're doing a lot of video <laughs> content now. <aren't> you? <laughs> If you like it high speed, like you're on drugs, <laughs> drinking lots of alcohol, but with really shit hot, uh, information, check him out. He's, he's super fast, but he's really, really good. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much today. Audience, thank you for joining us. I'm going to end the broadcast now. I'll see you back here 4 o'clock tomorrow. Howard Ty in the hot chair, in the hot seat. We're going to pick him apart and ask him questions about how to protect your net with Black Hat. He's going to be gracefully giving up his time. So I'll see you all again tomorrow, and thank you guys for joining. Thank you. Thank you.